So, uh, what I wanted to do was think about aspects that have worked for transition, especially for children, but within that also think about things that teachers or parents might be able to do with children in creative ways and things that are natural to children. Okay, so I'm going to move a bit from what the situation is to how we might be able to facilitate that. Before I move to that, is, are there any questions? Are you all okay? Okay, so let's think about what works during transitions. When I did that throwing of the ball, what was happening, or when people were talking about researching, finding out where to go, or where you're going, finding out about the place, about the history of the things. Familiarization becomes quite an important aspect of transition planning and preparation. And schools do a very good job of that. If you think about it, there are things in place like induction events, open days, uh, children going out. Sometimes in Dundee schools, for example, happens when children are in P6, they start going out to the high school to start having swimming lessons. Some music teachers try to bring children together from primary and secondary schools, and things like that happen all the time. Um, sometimes when they are through schools, they already start trying to bring children in to different sort of stages with them. So that becomes quite important and I think schools do it very well. Where I think sometimes there is an issue is how quickly it is done and how far it's followed on. And like I was saying to you earlier that sometimes we do end up with transition <coughs> being seen as an, a one-off event. So let's put something in place here, let's put something in place here, and then everything will be fine. Actually, it will be fine because everything has started much earlier. And from our research, you know, the longitudinal studies we do, we know that children were okay in October of the year. By March the next year, they might have significant problems, all arising from transitions. And if nobody is sort of thinking about it for that long, then that support is not there in place for that is supporting that child. So it's about remembering that familiarization doesn't stop after a certain period or it should not start just at the very beginning. It needs to go on and other planning and preparation needs to go on. The other thing we found that really works is active learning, active agency, which means like uh, making sure that the child is participating in their own transition planning and preparation. Um, one of the very good examples of that was a piece of research we did with one of the local authorities where three cluster high schools and their primary schools had used Guitar Hero for transition. Are you all familiar with Guitar Hero? Okay, I, I think not everybody in the audience are familiar. I just, I'm not going to start trying that, but basically <laughs> you've got a guitar, you've got a drum uh, uh, sort of kit with it, you've got, um, uh, so you have a playlist and you can sing to it and things like that. And so it's, you can have lots of different rules in a band. And what basically the schools did was, in keeping with the curriculum for excellence, they embedded the guitar that that in primary school. When they went into secondary school, they had the battle of the bands. And one of the schools that it did really well, what it did was it had two days for it, rather than just the induction days. And they had children put into groups. And this was a community which is really big community, but a lot of rural communities. So children, for one school, children could be spread out in lots of different places, geographically coming together. And my only way, obviously, when having to observe was to know by their color of their jumpers. And they put children together in groups of eight, and usually there would be only one color jumper in that group. But what they were told was they are going to have a competition. They were going to have the battle of the bands. So this group would come together very quickly. They were asked to uh, come up with band identity. They were asked to come up with merchandise for the band. Somebody had to become managers. So they said, if you're good at maths organization, what do you want to do? If uh, somebody was good at singing, maybe they want to think right. So children would play on their, according uh, to their strengths and went with that. And the result of that was, I still remember, we, I thought, I'll go at lunchtime. I'm sure they go back to the same colors coming together. But when I went out, they stayed in the same groups that they were in the room, which was quite interesting because what had happened was children who didn't know each other, one, it was a computer game, probably most children were interested anyway. They came together very quickly and started uh, becoming, forming a group because they had a common purpose. They had to have a competition with another group. It wasn't I'm competing against somebody from my class or my school, it was more I'm competing with somebody from a different band. So that sort of thing worked really well. 
And um, then one of the things that I have been doing is that on the basis of the research data we have, we know certain things that really excite children, things that really worry children. So instead of sort of saying to children, a teacher saying to children, well, what's worrying me, what's exciting me, which children usually won't talk about, uh, try to put it on a board game. And I've kept it simple, on purpose very low tech. And I'll pass it around. So basically, there are photographs on it, and there are simple words on it that, that children can see it as boring, or children can see it as exciting. And then it's used like an ordinary board game. So a group of children would come together, play with it, move around it, and wherever they land, then they can have a discussion about that aspect. And we tried it out for children, and children thought it worked really well because they weren't having to answer to an adult. They could play it as a game, and it was more natural for them. It also worked and works at home. We tried it with families where even if it was one child and the mother playing it, it worked because the mother could share their experiences as a child and what strategies they used and things like that. Uh, another thing, similar thing that uh, was around. <coughs> so the idea behind the board game was to make sure that children have enough opportunities to explore things that worry them and excite them. And during the discussions, what then happens is that they realize they're not the only one worried about it, or they're not the only one thinking about it. There are the children. But also discussions can lead to finding, looking for solutions. In, in the same context, one of the things that um, the idea is, and what we found really works with children, is providing them a safe environment to rehearse <coughs> things. So if they're worried about something, about going to um, a new school or a new classroom or something, you can provide settings for them where they can play somebody else. And there is a technique called foreign theater. Uh, have you heard of the foreign theater approach? It's uh, basically, it's, it's also about the theater of the oppressed. And it, it's uh, Augusto Boal from Brazil was the one who came up with it. And you would have it as street theater. And basically what happens is that there is oppression and the protagonist keeps trying to change the situation and the other person is trying to oppress and the spectators can come in and say where to change, what change can be brought about, or spectators can become spectators. They can come up and change the scenario. So first, for the, because we, I was thinking how could that work for, for very early years, instead of doing it as a drama thing, uh, did it as a storybook. So for example, in the storybook, you might have a scenario where, um, I don't know whether you can see it or but there are children playing, one child pushes another child, six other children in the playground, what's going to happen now? And it's all about children learning, if you do this, what might be the consequence? Because then they can choose the option, go to a page, and on the basis of that they can move on. Um, we are sitting in this as well. And the idea is then, because children and parents and all the time are involved in playing games, reading books anyway, it's a natural way of trying to use techniques to get them to think about different strategies, different ways of working. 